Hey, good morning, Northridge. How you doing? All right. You guys like uh, feeling full still, or have we? Uh, did, did, did what happened on Thanksgiving get corresponded by equal restraint the next day? Yeah, no, it didn't. Yeah, no, me neither. Um, oh man, I'm glad you're here today because I got one goal. My one goal today is that you wouldn't be done giving thanks. My my one goal today is that um, the, uh, the, the week of Thanksgiving isn't the one week a year where we really practice gratitude in some kind of intentional way, that, uh, that we're going to launch out into about another, another 51 weeks until we do it again. And, uh, and so that's what this is about. So the other day, I was, uh, I was looking for some email, and so I thought I would check my spam filter. I don't know if anybody's ever done that, because it was supposed to be somewhere. And, uh, and so I'm looking through my spam and looking at the subject lines, and I thought to myself, boy, why do they filter this stuff out? All these people have such great plans for my life. I mean, there's, I mean, there's somebody out there that wants to turn my body into a fat-burning machine. I mean, what could be better than that, right? You know, bacon and whipped cream, bring it on. Um, you know, other people want to, to, re, to give me more life insurance, and they want me to, to remove my, relieve my back pain, remove my skin tags. I don't know what they are. Um, it's like, like a price tag someplace I wasn't aware of. I don't know. Um, you know, and they want to lower my blood pressure. They want to warn me of the dangers of yellow fingernails. Who knew? Actually, I got done reading it. I was very grateful for my spam filter. Because, you know, life is a lot like that. Uh, it's like that spam filter because there's so much that comes down. Somehow you've got to filter things out or you're going to miss important things. And, uh, and I'm glad I got a spam filter that does that with my email. But every one of us, I believe, needs a filter on our life. Otherwise, we are going to miss some things that matter. And that filter is gratitude to God. You know, last week we talked about the fact that gratitude isn't just about gratitude for gratitude's sake. Gratitude isn't about the, just the, the, you know, the way it makes us feel or, the, you know, the, the, the way it lowers our blood pressure and, you know, all that other stuff. That, that's great. Those are wonderful byproducts. But the purpose of gratitude is relationship. And primarily our relationship with God. And... Uh, and, and it need, this filter needs to be on at all times. The antenna needs to be up 52 weeks a year, not just one week a year at Thanksgiving. Um, you know, gratitude is the activity of the heart that bolsters our faith in the things that we do not understand. Uh, I don't know, anybody have a few of those things going on in your life right now where you say, I don't understand what's going on. I, I don't know what to do with it. I know I do. And, 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 you know, and you're in that moment of waiting. And, and, and gratitude is the thing that, that helps us to continue to see God's work in our life and in the disappointments and in the pain because it's the thing that causes us to look for the thread of God's work weaving through our whole lives. And gratitude causes us to look to God and exercise faith because faith and gratitude go together. Faith is first, but gratitude feeds faith. I, I love this verse. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. And uh, I used to memorize these verses um, whenever, you know, I, I went to a Christian school when I was in elementary school, and we had to memorize, you know, quote verses to get certain things. And somebody always got Jesus wept first. But I found that these were great verses because John, or excuse me, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 is, be joyful always. I can remember that one. But, but this is a trio of verses uh, that need to stay together. Would you read it with me? Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, now again, this, this trio has to sing together. It's not just one or the other. All of them need to be employed. Joy is not just the facade of joy, but true joy. And how do you do that? How do you find joy when there's stuff in your life that seems to be sucking the joy out of it? How do we stay? And here's my kind of my definition of joy is where you're able to stay positive and hope-filled. How do you fight for that joy? 
in those situations. Well, number two, pray continually. This is how you do it. You pray continually, seeking God's wisdom, seeking God's power, seeking God's, God's work, his comfort, seeking his love continually and never giving up. And then giving thanks in all circumstances. Giving thanks in all circumstances. Because whatever, whatever situation is absorbing all your attention, it's not all of your life. Whatever situation has got all your attention, maybe because of the pain it's causing or the frustration or whatever, isn't everything and, and, and gratitude forces us to step back and see that, yeah, maybe I don't see God here, but I see him there. I, the other day, Terry and I were, it was a, couple, a few, well, I guess it was a couple years ago now, but we were driving in the car, and all of a sudden she goes, oh, wow, look at that rainbow. And, and I'm driving, I'm going, where, where? And, and she, she points, there, right there, can't you see it? And I, you know, and, whoops, you know, I guess I can see a little something. And then she takes off her sunglasses and she hands them to me and says, here, put these on. And, and as stylish as I looked, I looked. <laughs> These big things with little gems around them. <laughs> I wish you could have seen me. And I look. And I went, oh, wow, look at that rainbow. What changed? Did the rainbow suddenly appear? No. I suddenly had the right filter on to see it. That's what changed. The rainbow was real, right? The rainbow didn't suddenly, you know, it wasn't just, oh, wow, now that I have, grain, have glasses on, the rainbow appeared. No. The rainbow was there. And I want to tell you, God's blessings are there. But if you don't have the filter of gratitude on, you won't see them. And when we see, because they are there and they are real and they aren't just made up. I know that's the lie of the devil, and that's the lie of the world that will tell you, well, that's, you're just, you know, you just have rose-colored glasses. Well, you know, if rose-colored glasses help you see reality, then get them on! I don't know, it just makes sense to me. You know, pessimism, people who are pessimists think, well, I'm just being a realist. No, you're not! Optimists are just as much realists as pessimists are. Pessimists are just arrogant about it, that's all. Anyway, whew, glad to get that off my chest. Um, where am I in this sermon? Okay, so, but God is working in all circumstances. Gratitude, gratitude to God keeps our perspective while we are waiting in one area of life so we can see his hand in the rest of our lives. Gratitude is the conscious decision of faith. Of faith. Now, I want to just review last week, because last week we were talking about the, the, the fact that it matters to whom you are grateful. And uh, I just want to review a few ideas from that, from that sermon. The first is this, is that gratitude sees that God is good and the source of all good. God is good and he is the source of all good. Second, we saw that, that, that in this fallen world where there are these trials and struggles, that God's process for bringing us blessing, and we need to understand this if we're going to start to have that right filter, his process for bringing us to blessing is to take us out of slavery to sin and how that is warping us and how that is affecting this world negatively, taking us out of that slavery through trials and temptations. Not around, but through trials and temptations into blessings, some of which are in this life. Some of which are in this life. But you know, it's not that, that, you know, that life is too short. It's that you're dead for so long, right? And so that is the blessings of eternity 
that he has in mind. Those are of great value to God because that's where he's going to be with you the longest time. Are you with me, church? So there are blessings there that God has out of slavery to sin through the trials into blessing. And gratitude in this whole process protects our relationship with God in Christ. Now, not from God's side of the equation, but from our side of the equation. We are saved and held in our salvation by the hand of God. He's got us with two hands, Jesus says. That's what's held. But from our side of the situation, gratitude is protection. It gives us perspective on our circumstances. It gives us perseverance in our trials. It protects us from writing false narratives about what is happening to us. Narratives that we write, that we, where we start to believe that God is against us because of the fallenness of this world. And it gives us the perception of his providence. And here's the key in all of this is to see all of creation as we go into this next year, that we would see all of creation as an expression of God's goodness and that we would receive everything that God has for us, everything that comes to us this year in this world, that we would receive it with thanksgiving to him. And, and today, I just want to say, okay, okay, everybody get uncomfortable right now because this is going to be a, you know, shake it up, get ready, get out of just listening mode because I'm only going to talk for a few more minutes and then I'm going to be asking you to do some stuff, all right? Because here's the deal. I want us to actually lean into gratitude and express it to God. So if you would do me a favor, if everybody would take out the tear off, and I'll tell you right now, there's not enough room here to do what I'm going to ask you to do. And I want to ask the ushers to come if they're ready. And, uh, oops, they're not ready. Hurry up, guys. All right, because here's the deal. They are going to give you pens. If you do not have something to write with, I want everybody to have something to write with. All right? And... Uh, because we're going to do a gratitude cheat sheet. If you need something to write with, they got a pencil here for you. We're going to do a gratitude cheat sheet. I, I take this from one of my science professors in college said, um, you can have a three by five card cheat sheet with you for the test. It was one of the best learning devices that he could have ever given us. He said, anything you can write on that card, you can have with you to help you take this test. Any formula or whatever. And I tell you what, I learned more making that card than I did for any other studying I ever did. Because it, it just made me focus and ask questions about, well, what's really important? And, and oh man, I just learned a lot from that. And, and I decided, you know what, I'm not going to write that formula down. I can remember that one. I got to write down this one, you know, and, and it, was, it was great. So, and here's the deal. You are going to be taking a gratitude test this week. Did you know that? You are going to be taking a gratitude test this week. And this is your cheat sheet. This week, we are not going to put these in, in the in the offering plate like we normally do and you know that, that way that we pray for us this you're going to fill this out and i want you to keep it in your pocket i don't care if it gets washed it's uh, well I, uh, maybe you do but i don't um because i want you to have it in your pocket or in your purse or or some place where where you look at it and you have your gratitude cheat sheet to help keep you focused and if you're online today I want to ask you to get pencil and paper right now, and I want to ask you to participate with us right now as we do this. Because we want to see all creation as an expression of God's goodness and receive it with thanksgiving to him. And the verse I want to use to focus us is this verse right here. It's, it's found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. And would you read it with me? It says, for everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Let me give you a little bit of, a little bit of context here, which will help us, help, help us in filling out these cards in just a minute. All right? Humanity struggles with its relationship to the created world as well as we struggle with our relationship with God. 
And, and we move in our relationship with all the stuff, with the material things, the relationships, everything that God gives us in this world. We struggle. We move kind of back and forth between moments of self-denial and of self-indulgence. And we, and we are constantly going back and forth. Moments of anorexia and moments of, you know, of gluttony. Of, you know, moments of being legalists and moments of being libertines where we have no rules and no, no form or, or structure. We just do whatever we want. And, and both of those are destructive. Now, we happen to be in a time of self-indulgence. That's kind of our culture right now. But that's not always true. The, the, the pendulum is always going back and forth because so, overindulgence causes pain, and so then we tend to go over here, right? And, and, so, and then that causes pain when we're over here, and then we go over there. And, and that's because we don't have, well, we don't have gratitude. We don't have a focus on God to get us in the right relationship. And that's kind of what this whole passage is about. And, and what was happening now is they were in a moment where, where it was the self-denial phase of, of culture, where they'd be responding to overindulgence. People were going the opposite direction. And Paul says that false teachers, people who have doctrines of demons, he calls it, um, are, are, are hypocritical liars, he calls them, are coming into the church and they're preaching, hey, you know, it's a fallen world. It's an evil world. And everything in this world is evil. And all the material blessings of this world are evil. And, and if you really want to have a relationship with God, frankly, it's not even really about Jesus. It's about cutting yourself off from all the, you know, from this world and not being in this world and, you know, just, you know, don't eat, don't get married, don't do, you know, you just, you know, deny yourself and that's how you're going to have, the, you know, whatever spiritual experience it is that you're looking for. That's kind of what was going on. This was the teaching um, now, now, that doesn't seem appealing to us because we're in the overindulgent phase and we go, oh, no, we would never do that. Oh, yes, we would. But that's another question. Um, but, but that's the deal. And, and so in verse 3, it says, you know, it says, Paul says, they forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. And what is the truth? It's that God has reconciled us to himself through Christ. And that, 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 that has not only changed our relationship with God, but it has changed our relationship with creation such that now we understand that the source of our life, the source of our health, the source of our peace, the source of our contentment is our relationship with God. And that all these things in this world, whether it's food, which is material stuff, or whether it's marriage, which is relational blessings that God has for us, are all ours to have resources, they're resources that God gives us, and we're to receive those as, 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 a, as a gift from him with thanksgiving, you know, and, and so that everything we created is good. Nothing is rejected if it's received with thanksgiving. Why? Verse 5, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Why? Because all these things, the material blessings that he has, the relational blessings that he has, are all consecrated, are all focused on him because of our relationship with Christ. And we take everything that God gives us, and through the direction of the word of God and through prayer, we offer it back to him and we say, God, show me how to use this blessing. Show me how to use this. Show me how to be married. Show me how to, to use the, the, the material goods that you've given me in a way that's going to be the greatest blessing. Thank you for what you've given me. Now show me how to use it. In short, we thank God for what he has given and for teaching us how to do it. And, but, but here at the, at, the, at the core of all of this that Paul is saying, it starts with gratitude to God for what he has made and what he has given us. So for the balance of our time, we are going to have a gratitude workshop. All right? Now, you cannot write everything that you want to write on this little piece of paper, but that's not the point. Maybe you can go home and get a, a notebook and fill that. But right now, it might be just write a word that reminds you. Something that would prompt you that you read it and you go, oh, yes, I know, I remember. All right? And, and here's what we're going to do. So we're going to pray a little prayer, and then we're going to spend some time reflecting and create this gratitude cheat sheet on three areas. We're going to talk about the material blessings of God. We're going to acknowledge him for his material blessing of us. 
We're going to acknowledge him for his relational blessings, the relationships that he has given us, and we are going to acknowledge him for the spiritual blessings that he has given us in Christ. All right? So that's what we're going to do. In the balance of our time, we're going to do some stuff in writing, and then we're going to have an open mic, and we're going to share some things. And uh, so right now, I want us to pray a little prayer to get us started, and then I'm going to talk us through this. Would you pray this with me? God, our Father, open our eyes to the overflowing bounty of your blessings of this world in Christ. Father, do that. Really do that. First, let's talk about material blessings. Let's open up our eyes. You know, Jesus gave thanks. In my quick survey of the, of the Gospels, there's three times it's recorded that Jesus gave thanks. Did you know that two of those times was for his food? One before he broke the bread and fed them the fish and fed the 5,000. And the other time was before the Last Supper. He gave thanks for the material blessings that God has. We have all got material blessings. Now, what are some places, maybe? Some places where you have just, you've just gone, wow, God, thank you. Thank you for this place. What are some things in creation? What are some things that we have produced with our intelligence, and with the resources that God has given us. Maybe it's a business you've built. Maybe it's, maybe it's something that you've built, and this brought you great joy in doing it. That was a gift from God. Okay, take some time now and write. I'm going to give you time to write. Write down what are the, the places and things in creation for which you want to give thanks and things that maybe you've produced from what he's given us in creation. All right, number two. What are the relational blessings for which you are thankful? The Apostle Paul in Philippians 1, verse 3, he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. Who are those people that God has put in your life that when you think about them, you thank God for them? Write their names down. Who are, who are those? Maybe it's a team of people. And you're, you're accomplishing something together that, that, that you think is important. Give thanks. Give thanks for these relationships.
finally, I, I, wanna, I want us to take a moment and thank God for the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. And to help us think about that, I want to read a passage of Scripture to you. The passage is Ephesians chapter 1, all right? Now, I've, I've distilled about six items out of this passage that I'm going to read to you, Sean. If you could throw those up on the screen right now. Reading from Ephesians chapter 1, I am going to just kind of read through, and I want you to just kind of listen for each of these as we go through. And then maybe whatever else God prompts you of the blessings that you have received through Christ. And we're going to give thanks to God for those spiritual blessings. But why don't you listen as I read Ephesians chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we also were chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity to the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Take a moment right now and for, for which of these blessings, maybe in particular or maybe some other thing that, that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind, what, for what do you give thanks in Christ today? What spiritual blessings are yours? All right, now you have a cheat sheet. So you can pass the test this week. But you know, good practice is to verbalize. Especially in the assembly before God here in this place of worship. And to verbally express our gratitude to God for what he's done. Well, I have one. This morning, I, uh, you know, get up early on Sunday and get down, get my coffee and start looking at the, um, start looking at the sermon, getting, getting my heart and mind in the right place. And I don't usually have my phone with me, but all of a sudden up on my phone came a, a WhatsApp 
message from uh, Pastor Oman Estrada and Fuente de Vida. And he said, I'm just wrapping up a seven-day fast and prayer, and I want you to know that I've been praying for you. I've been praying for Northridge. I've been praying for all that God has called you to do and to be. Um, and uh, I don't know, I was just overwhelmed. And uh, that to have a brother like that and a church like that, that we are standing together with. And let us open our eyes to see the grace of God and to respond with gratitude and all that he's done. And I ask the worship team to come and let's wrap up our time together and just worship him, give him praise, give him honor, give him glory as we sing. Um, we're going to be giving our offering as we do. And I just ask you today, um, don't give out of any sense of compulsion. Everything that you have, everything that's been put in your hands has been provided by your Father who loves you and, uh, and is inviting you into his work through this act of giving. And so just give with a sense of gratitude that God has provided that God will provide because he loves you, period. Let's stand up. Don't put your tear off in the basket. Put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. Yeah. yeah. We're just so grateful that uh, God just will continuously, he's never going to stop pouring more and more into your life. Let's thank him for his faithfulness to do that, his love that he would even want to do that. And uh, hopefully that inspires us to, to do more for those around us. Sing this.
All right. All right, are you ready for the test? It's coming. And so may the God who gives you endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and one mouth you declare the praises of the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You have a great week.